I call this uh, for the Park Board of Commissioners for July 7, 2021 into order. Pursuant to the open meeting law, any person may make an audio or video recording of this public meeting or may transmit the meeting through any medium. Attendees are therefore advised that such recordings or transmissions are being made, whether perceived or unperceived, by those present and are deemed acknowledged and permissible. Uh, first, we're going to have our open uh, our public hearing on the park grant for two, uh, FY22, uh, uh, park land and questions and renovations of communities, park grant information. We have Jane DiBiazzi, our uh, grant writer here for the city. She's going to do her presentation. We're going to turn the meeting over to you. Thank you. Thank you for having me and we'll everyone who's here. Thank you. Oh, sorry. Do you Excuse me a second. Guys, we're not in our regular meeting. We're in an open yep. pop thing. Oh, right. the hearing, then we get to our meeting. Yep. We're doing, guys, excuse me one second. Guys, our commission, we're in a pop information meeting first. Then once she's done, then we're going into our open meeting, our, our regular meeting. Sorry about that. No, that's okay. Thank you. Uh, my name is Jane DiBiazio and I'm the city's grant writer and I'm here today to do a brief presentation, it's very brief, just a few slides on, the, um, on a funding opportunity that the city is going to be applying for. So uh, part of the uh, reason that I'm here is to just tell people about the funding opportunity, about our proposed project idea and to get um, to take questions and to get feedback from people um, about the project if if there are any comments or questions you can feel free to ask um, also i know you you may not from where you are be able to see the slides but you can come around nancy said if you want to look at the slides you could come over to this side and then you could see all the slides um, but as I, as i said there aren't that many and i'll do my best to narrate them well also um, as of tomorrow, the, this entire presentation and meeting will be available for viewing on FRG TV. So uh, you could catch up with the slides at that point and you, we would still accept comments or questions at that point. This particular funding opportunity is called Parkland Acquisition and Renovations for Communities and it's known as the Park Grant. And what we're going to be talking about today is um, this actual opportunity that we have, the goals of the funding source, and we're going to give a description of past and the potential projects that we're looking to apply for this year. Um, the funding source is the Massachusetts Executive Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs Division of Conservation Services. What we're going to be talking about is um, an overview of the park grant the park grants timetable, some of Fall River's previous park grants that we've received and the work that we've been able to do with this funding, and then we're going to talk about what we're going to propose to do with the park grant this year if we were so fortunate as to receive it. And of course we're going to have an opportunity for you to, for you to ask questions or make comments also. This particular funding opportunity is for the development of new parks or to renovate existing parks or to acquire recreation land. As I said, the funding source is the um, Executive Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs. The current secretary is Kathleen Theaherides. I'm sure I didn't pronounce that correctly. I know how to spell it, but I'm not sure how to say it. And each year, the secretary sets forward some goals for the park grants and for fiscal year 22 which began began July 1st the um, priorities include funding projects in environmental justice neighborhoods and I'm going to be talking a little bit more about that on the next slide another priority is to develop new parks also to design parks that incorporate climate resilience and to provide access to recreation for all residents those are this year's priorities, according to the secretary. The funding provides, um, co covers costs that um, are related to the renovation and the development of the project. These are typically two-year grants. So in the first year, during year one, 
we would do engineering and design of the project, and then in year two, we would begin the actual construction and the supervision of the construction project. I wanted to mention a little bit about um, climate resilience and the purpose of that. Uh, what we're doing is looking to develop or, or design projects that protect or enhance water-based recreation and that incorporate resiliency and things like adding trees, um, adding uh, pervious surface so that water can seep through or run off, um, and also store, storing water. So again, either trees or plants that help with doing that, absorbing the storm water or rain water and um, preventing flooding. Environmental justice, I mentioned before that one of the Secretary's priorities is to fund projects in environmental justice neighborhoods. So I just want to read the definition of environmental justice, which is here. Environmental justice is a goal of the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency, and is the fair treatment and meaningful involvement of all people, regardless of their race, color, national origin, or income, with respect to the development, implementation, and enforcement of environmental laws, regulations, and policies. And environmental justice is achieved when everyone enjoys the same degree of protection from environmental and health hazards and equal access to the decision-making process to have a healthy environment in which to live, learn, and work. So one of the purposes of me coming here and presenting this information is to make sure that everyone has an opportunity to hear what the city is planning to apply for, the project that we're planning to, to fund and design if we're funded, and to receive comments or questions from basically the population, any resident of the city of Fall River. We know in Fall River that we do have um, a large population of what, what are in, in considered environmental justice populations. They're people who um, are lower income, who may belong to a minority group, and who have English language isolation. In other words, they, their English language proficiency is not very good. And they're maybe in a pocket where they're, they're not able to receive information that they need. They don't have a means to give input or ask questions about what's going on in their own neighborhoods. So this is an effort to try to right that. The timetable for the park grant is, um, is that applications are due July 14th, which is next week. We can also provide um, the state with letters of support for the project. We typically ask our legislators to um, support us and they advocate for us at the state level so that we can get funding to do projects like this in Fall River. Typically, we would hear about an award in December, so we have to wait a while to hear what the results of the application are. And um, by the end of the calendar year, we have to get a city council vote, a successful city council vote, because with these grants, they are reimbursement grants, and the city council has to vote to um, actually appropriate the total project cost up front, and then as we incur the costs, and prove that we've incurred the cost to the state, then they reimburse us. The project start date, it's never a, a definite or hard date. It's just upon contract execution. So it all, it all relies and depends on when the awards are announced and then when the contracts are signed and executed. We would have to complete the project by June 1st of 2023. So again, these are two-year projects. I want to mention too that all of the sites, all of the park projects that we are able to do with this funding must be open to all, um, to, to everyone basically, they, even non-residents um, and certainly people who are disabled or handicapped in some way. When we're preparing a, a grant application, we're looking to of course provide an application that is competitive. Um, but it's not just subjective for us. We must follow what the state has given us for guidelines. So, of course, the state provides us with a grant rating system. 
So these are the items that we consider as we're putting together our application. It doesn't mean that we always hit all of them. And in fact, <coughs> usually there's one or two that we may not hit with each and every project. So the state just uses a rating system so that they can be fair and objective as they're scoring the field of applications that come in in any given year. So the state's looking to see whether or not um, the park that we're proposing to do the project in is in an environmental justice neighborhood. In Fall River, that's not a challenge. Pretty much <coughs> all of our parks are located within environmental justice neighborhoods. They also look to see whether the project increases access to recreational amenities for residents, including people with disabilities. They also look to see whether there will be some form of environmental education on site. It could be, you've probably been to a park where they've had little signs or placards or some kind of a bulletin board or something and they may have information about environmental education available. They also look to see whether um, water-based recreation is being offered. In the past, we've, we've gotten funding to do some splash pads. So that's always a big hit with the state. Is the park located in an area that's mapped as an urban heat island? An urban heat island is a municipal area um, that is where the temperature is typically higher than the suburbs or an urban, uh, a suburban location due to, to, due to development and waste heat that comes from high energy use. They also look to see whether the project design incorporates climate resiliency. I mentioned a few of those things before. Are we planting trees? Are the surfaces, um, like if there's a playground or a surface being installed um, on for the tennis court or a playground, they look to see whether you're using lighter colors that would re you know, reflect the sun rather than absorb it. And also that would allow, again, water, rain um, to go through the surface rather than collect on. They also look to see whether we've publicized and provided outreach to the community about the proposed project. Do we have a partner for future stewardship of the park? Um, you may know that often the mayor's office has um, some community cleanups and there are many organizations within the city that participate in those and it's a great help to us to keep our community looking, looking good. They also look to see whether our project will address our own open space and recreation plan. Um, every seven years, we, the city has to revise our open space and recreation plan goals. It's basically um, a, sort of like a blueprint for what we're gonna do in the city with regard to open space and recreation. And they also look to see whether um, we have met any of the goals and objectives from the states plan. They have what's called a comprehensive outdoor recreation plan and will, will our project advance the state's goals for recreation and open space. So these are all of the items that we try to hit as we're, we try, excuse me, that we try to hit as we're developing our proposal. We want it to be competitive. We want it to hit all of the items that the state's looking at or as many of them as possible. So again, it's not a subjective process. We are looking at uh, the rating system that the state uses and trying to be as competitive and on target with that as possible. In the past, Fall River has been very successful in getting many park grants and we've been able to do many different projects. And here's a short list of, um, of some of them. We were able to renovate the North Main Street entrance of North Park. At North Park, we also renovated bleachers and sidewalks there. In Britland Park, we put in the synthetic turf field and we cleaned up the entrance and the parking areas and the paths and some picnic areas. At Maplewood Park, we acquired two parcels of land adjacent to the park to be designated as open space. We uh, revised or refurbished the basketball courts at Kennedy, Ruggles, Maplewood, Abbott Court, and North Park. We renovated the ball fields at Maplewood, Kennedy, and Abbott Court. We put in spray parks at Maplewood and Chew Parks. And this year's, the, 20, the 2021 park grant, we are working on the Kathy Asad top lot and playground. So there's a lot of work that's going on there. Um, we're reconstructing and repairing the playground equipment, installing new swing set and play structure, putting in new benches, new basketball court, and a spray park, putting in new fencing, and some trees. 
That project is right now, the construction portion is going out to bid. Within a week or so, we'll have it awarded and construction will begin at Kathy Asad tot lot. So as you can see, um, the city has been um, the grateful recipient of several of these park grants and with, with this money, we're able to do a lot of things that we might not otherwise be able to do. And I also want to add that oftentimes the 30%, because I, as I said, the state will reimburse us for up to 70% of the total project cost, and oftentimes the 30% is provided by the Community Development Agency. So I just wanted to acknowledge that. They help us with the municipal share, the 30%. So this year's project, we are going to propose to renovate the Kennedy Park tennis courts. And that will involve removing the existing services, surfaces and resurfacing and adding new striping, nets, fencing, and lighting to the existing tennis courts. And then as a new feature and the city's first ever pickleball courts, we're going to create pickleball courts you can create four pickleball courts within one tennis court. So we would take one of the tennis courts down at Kennedy Park and incorporate the, the uh, dimensions, the layout for pickleball. We understand that that's an up and coming sport here in, um, in the city as well as the state and around the country. And we would also be planting new trees. Again, we always try to keep in mind the climate resiliency piece. That is pretty much a description of the park grant, past, present, and maybe future. Um, I, I wanted to add that um, you can contact Nancy Smith, who's the director of the Parks Department. She's sitting over there. Uh, she, her phone number is 508-324-2550. And her email is nsmith at fallriverma.org. You certainly could also reach me. I'm in the mayor's office, so if you called and asked for Jane, they would transfer you to me if you have questions about the park grant or comments. Um, again, we're, this is what we're proposing. We'll be submitting the application next Wednesday, and then we'll just wait to hear from the state as to how we fared in the review process. And we're hoping that we're successful again this year as we have been many times in the past. Does anyone have any questions for me at this point? I do. So for the, the grant, the only court that you're seeking to, or the only park you're seeking to use that grant money for would be Kennedy's. The this, this year, correct. This year? Yes, okay. as you can see, we try to, we try very hard to sort of move it around yep. throughout the city and uh, target different areas. And a lot of times um, the project idea is based on things that um, the mayor's office has heard, you know, ideas or um, comments from people who say we really hope that we can do such and such a project. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, it's just a matter of deciding which, which project would be the most competitive at any given time. Okay. That's all I have. Okay. Any other questions, Commissioners? At this time, I close this public hearing for FY22 Park Grant application. And I'll go right into reading of the, uh, excuse me, uh, roll call of commissioners for our regular park meeting, park board meeting, roll call of commissioners. Amber Burns. Victor Farias. Helen Arrigo. Joseph De Silva. Acceptance of minutes from the June tw uh, 2nd, 2021 20, uh, meeting. Make motion to accept. Second it. We have a uh, citizen input. Joe, did you notice? Yeah, I already did. Okay, sorry. I did that earlier. I'm sorry. Can I get that, please? Do you want to grab that?
Hey, uh, we have citizen input. Everybody uh, has uh, three minutes. We're starting at 537. Uh, Veronica Gomes. Come on up. And she's for a new life soccer event. Yep, just uh, introduce yourself, your address and that, and then what you're here for. Um, so my name is Veronica Gomes. Um, our church is located in New Bedford, and we have a campus here at, at Morton Middle School um, on Sundays, and we're here to discuss um, doing an event at uh, Brooklyn Park. Okay. All right. Do you have anything you want to add about this? So we're doing this now so that we don't have to have too many questions later. So if you have anything you want to add about it, you have three minutes to talk about the event. If you don't, then... Oh, okay. Yeah. So the event, we've, we've actually held events prior to COVID with the city of New Bedford. So we're looking to do a soccer event um, geared towards like involving like the families and you know, like kid events. Um, so we would have uh, four soccer teams, you know, um, playing on the soccer field, and then we would be using the um, the rest of the park to um, focus on the family and, and the children. So we would uh, like to use the uh, basketball courts um, and the rest of like the, the fields um, or the park, I should say, to either do like um, like face painting or you know if we're allowed to have bouncy houses or anything like that, um, whatever the city would you know allow there. Um, just to make it more of like a family, a family event. Okay. The bounty houses I know are not allowed. Yeah. The liability. Yep. Uh, one question, uh, you know you're going to have to have a liability insurance. We do. Yep. And the city has to be on the secondary. Yep. Okay. There is no open girls. Right. No, we wouldn't in, have any okay. food either. We would just do like water and maybe like chips or something. Okay. 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 All right. Okay. All right. Any other questions from any commissioners? Nope. <coughs> All right, thank you. Sit around. When we get to your agenda, we'll call you up if we need you more. All right, Christian McClowski. Good afternoon. My name is Christian McClowski. I'm the Youth Services Coordinator for the City of Fall River. I live at 166. Ray Street, uh, my request is regarding Kindness Rocks. Um, a few years ago, groups have developed in the city and created these Kindness Rocks in which you write positive messages. And it's an informal group and they leave them throughout the city. Um, through a Peace and Positivity campaign under the, the Forever Youth Violence Prevention Initiative, I've been looking to create pockets of peace and positivity. Um, currently, they're based around existing peace poles. Uh, there's one in the government center lobby, there's one outside of the government center, and there's one <coughs> in the police department in the old Bank Street Armory. Recreation is going to be planting a new peace pole and uh, creating their own pocket. And I reached out to Ms. Smith regarding um, Maplewood Park. And the reason I chose Maplewood Park is because there's already a memorial with a, with a plaque that says stop violence. So I was looking to have a designated area to <clears throat> leave Kindness Rocks and th that would be at the base of the flagpole. Um, there's a cement circle. So, so it wouldn't interfere with the, the maintenance at all. It wouldn't go on the grass at all. Um, unless we want to create a rock garden there which no maintenance would be needed even if temporary so the only thing I was looking for is permission to place rocks at the bottom of the base and people from throughout the community can add to it or take uh, the kindness rocks away and that's all I have any questions commissioners thank you, you intend to do this in all the parks R right now the, the um, Maplewood is the only yeah. location just because there's that um, already designated m memorial that's right. um, like 20 yards away. If this is successful and if there are other areas that we could identify, then absolutely. But right now, just because of that memorial, um, that, that's why we selected Maplewood. Thank you. Thank you. Emily Holmes. 
uh, permission to waive the meet, uh, permission to uh, waive the rules for uh, someone from to out of town. Motion to waive the rules. Second. Okay. Commissioner waive the rules. Commissioner Burns. Uh, Commissioner Farry second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Hi everyone, uh, my name is Emily Holmes. I'm the administrative assistant at the Fall of YMCA. I manage the membership and youth programs department. Um, I'm representing the Y today to um, request use of the Highland Park basketball courts on Sunday, August 29th um, for a three-on-three -three charity basketball tournament. Um, the purpose of the basketball tournament is to support the Fall of YMCA's annual support campaign, um, which for those of you that don't know, basically raises the money for scholarships for membership and programs all of the proceeds for this particular event will go directly toward youth basketball program scholarships um, to make the programs more accessible to those who would otherwise not really be able to afford it um, we're trying to keep this event as simple as possible possible in terms of like setup and breakdown it's just going to consist of the three on three tournament halfway through we're going to do a three-point contest um, we are going to have food and concession but we're not looking to have any girls or anything like that everything's gonna be cold um, there are going to be activities for kids. Um, we would potentially need to bring a generator for either um, a DJ booth or um, for just a mic and speaker, um, and then potentially set up a porta potty. Um, but that's basically it. We're trying to keep it as simple as possible. Great. And you know that um, with the porta potty, you're going to have to go through the board of health and that follow okay. all safety guidelines that yes. they are requesting. Yep. Okay. All right, uh, and obviously the Y has liability, liability insurance, and yes. you'll have to meet the city uh, yes. secondary on the policy. I did talk to Nancy about that. Okay. Um, so we would, if the date gets approved and we can use that space, then we'll go through all of, yep. Yep. All of that. No problem. All right, thank you. Thanks. Jason Peddler, Peddler. Maplewood Regional Tournament. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, yes. Uh, Just introduce yourself. My name is Jason Petter, 404 Birch Street, uh, President of Maplewood Baseball League. Um, we are going to be hosting uh, the uh, Cal Ripken New England Regional Tournament uh, July 16th through the 23rd. Um, we've done these in the past in the district level, first time we've ever done on a regional level. Um, got people coming into the city from New Hampshire, Maine, Vermont, Connecticut, Rhode Island. Um, I think it's a great opportunity for the league, the city, for all these people to come on in. Um, that's about it. Okay. Any questions, commissioners? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Is it Tony? Yes. Uh, health First Walkathon? Yes. Uh, just introduce yourself. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Tony Lautieri. I'm the Director of Marketing and Development for Health First Family Care Center, Incorporated, uh, located right over on Quarry Street, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with us. Um, <clears throat> we're looking to get back to raising funds for some of our programs now that the pandemic, we hope, is over. Um, we had wanted to uh, organize this walkathon last year, but unfortunately, we all know what happened with that. So we're trying to get back to fundraising. Um, we're looking at hopefully a date of Sunday, October 17th, with a rain date of the following Sunday. We would like to hold it um, on a portion of the, the uh, Alfred J. Lima Kirkushan River Rail Trail, basically from the point where um, I guess there are some soccer fields and a big, <coughs> excuse me, parking lot down as far as Kirkushan Street, and then turn around and come back. It's not a very long walk, but we actually uh, don't want people necessarily crossing over Kirkushan Street because you know you worry about traffic and so forth. Um, basically, this program, uh, this walkathon is going to be held uh, with the funds going to support our opioid and alcohol recovery program, given that uh, in our city, unfortunately, that is uh, a real issue that touches a lot of us. Uh, Health First created the program about three years ago, and so we would like to run this walkathon with the proceeds going to that particular program. 
Uh, we understand that um, we have to have liability insurance with you folks listed on it as well if you do give us permission. Um, I don't know if there are any fees involved, but I've done this kind of work quite a bit. Um, basically, we'll just be pulling from the community and our own employees and our community partners as far as who will attend. Um, the fee will probably be very, very minor. Um, it would be at 9 o'clock in the morning. We'd probably be out of there by around noontime. We would have sponsors and we would be putting um, ground signs along the, um, the path to advertise those sponsors. Uh, we are not planning on having any food other than perhaps to give people some water bottles um, and we will clean up and provide receptacles and, and all that sort of thing afterwards. So um, that's kind of it in, in a nutshell. I don't know if you have any questions for us. The only question I had was you, you are a 5013 say, right? Yes, we are. And we did provide um, the paperwork on that. And I actually have a copy here if you need it as well. Okay. All right. Any other uh, questions, commissioners? No. Hey, thank you. Okay, thank you. Brian Devining for the National Little League. I'm Brandi Vining from uh, Fall River National. I'm the president of the league. Um, I was originally asked um, to attend the meeting. Just uh, state your address, please. Oh, I'm sorry. My address is 20 Bardsley Street in Fall River. Um, I was asked to attend the meeting, um, but I also submitted a request to host a craft fair. In um, We ended up having to cancel our batting for a cause tournament, which our charity this year was Angels Anonymous due to every league having issues with teams and things like that, um, so we weren't actually able to get that put together. So this is the second year that we, unfortunately we've had to cancel this tournament, and this is the second year that we were going to be raising money for Angels, and I feel horrible that we've had to overlook, not overlook them, but kind of put it on hold. So I was hoping that to put together a craft fair um, August 14th, the date is flexible, um, in efforts to raise some money for them this year, um, especially considering that the food need in the city is just astronomical right now, um, to help lend them some help um, financially. Okay. Any other questions? Mm -mm. No? Okay. We'll back up on your your time. John Patello, Fed, uh, Federal Little League. Good afternoon. My name is John Patello. I live at 86 Woodman Street. I'm the president from Fall River Federal Little League at Kennedy Park. I'm here today to request uh, an extension of our permits so that we could have our summer baseball and fall ball. Um, we're going to keep our concession stand open with the protocols that we've been having all year. We'll still have the Port of John there with the same protocols we've had, and that's it. Questions, concerns? Questions? Good, thank you. Thank you. Oh, we'll stick around if you, uh, when we call your agenda on that. Janice Veloso. Uh, benches at the Quicker Shan River Trail. Hello, I'm Janice Veloso. Um, I'm from Little Compton, Rhode oh, Island. Hold on one second. Permission to waive the rules? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I'm on the city's advisory board for the rail trail, and um, we're requesting permission to install two benches. Um, John Perry has already um, been approved for money for eight of the benches. We have two benches that we have already identified locations, um, and this has been in the works for, for two years, but because of COVID, they never got installed. Um, and we're just looking for approval to get these two benches installed. Okay. And are these benches designated the ones that we have in all our city Absolutely. blocks? Absolutely. Yeah, Ms. Smith, okay. Um, I have an email that okay. I communicated with okay. Janice. All right. All right, Thank any you. other questions, commissioners? Thank you. At this time, it's 5.51. I'm closing citizen input. Item A on 
The agenda was the grant writer to hold a public hearing and personal information. Overview of the park grant FY22. Is there any questions or concerns by any of our commissioners? No. Okay. I would ask the, vote, the board to just vote to move for, have her move forward with yeah. submitting that application. Can I have a, a motion to uh, move this application forward from any of our commissioners? I'll make a motion to second. Do a second. Okay. Commissioner uh, Farris makes the motion. Commissioner Byrne seconds it. All in favor? Say aye. 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 Okay, item B, request from the board to uh, consider installing pickleball courts in city parks. Isn't this kind of a moot point if that's what we're going with the grant? Right, but well, we can notify this person that we are going to submit the grant. So if the board just wants to place it on file, I, I make a motion to now. let the person know that we're in the works and place on file. Okay, second, second that. Commissioner Burns makes the motion to place on file. Commissioner Farris seconds it. All in favor say aye. 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 Item C, I need a motion to untable this. Uh, Make a motion to untable the request for the help for us walk of time. Okay, I have a second. Second. Commissioner Farris makes the motion to untable this matter. Uh, Commissioner uh, Burns seconds it. All in favor say aye. 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 It's a request uh, from, uh, sorry, from the young woman, uh, request from Health First to do a walkathon on the Quickshan River Trail. And she, uh, you know, she just left. Uh, she did say that they are a nonprofit uh, and uh, they're going to do all the protocols that she's been in talks with, Ms. Smith, and everything. Uh, Motion to approve. Uh, one thing I just want to say uh, we're going to do it by, one by one. As uh, long as it's a uh, benefit in the community and everything, I want to do like we did last meeting, uh, permission to request to waive all fees for the summer, for, uh, as long as it's helping the community out. Mm -hmm. I have a motion? Motion to waive all fees. Second that. Okay. All in favor? Aye. And uh, do I have a motion to approve this? Motion to approve. Second it. Okay. Commissioner Burns makes a motion. Commissioner Farris seconds it. All in favor say aye. 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 Item D, request for installation of two, par, uh, two benches at the Quickershan River Trail. Motion to approve. Second. To approve. Second by Commissioner Rio. You second the Commissioner yes. Rio? Okay, thank you. Commissioner Burns uh, made the motion to approve. Commissioner uh, Rio seconded it. All in favor say aye. Aye. Thank you ladies, you're all set. Do you want John to let you know where the location is? Yes. Sorry, we'll have Mr. Perry tell us. Thank you. Item E, request from William Ha Bicentenary Veterans Day event 2021. I looked at this request and um, my thing is the veterans already handle the Veterans Day stuff down there. I think he needs, we need to pass this along to the veterans agent and let him work with them. Because the Veterans Association already handles all this stuff at all our parks with Veterans Memorials and everything. And if by us doing this, it's like we're stepping on toes. Well, I mean, uh, just duplicating efforts, if I but yeah. So, do I have a motion to uh, pass this along to our Veterans uh, Officer? I'll make a motion to pass this over to the GSO. Second. Second. Commissioner Farris made a motion. Uh, Commissioner Farry, uh, Burns seconds it. All in favor say aye. Aye. Item F, Jack Hackett, damage caused by members of the league at Kelly, uh, Kelly Park and Globe Street. So I don't wanna, can I? Good evening. I know most of you know I'm Jack Hackett. I've been running the uh, former Soul Play Softball League for about 57 years. Uh, lately, we've had some uh, property damage down at the field with the houses out in right field. Uh, the other morning, I was down in the park working, at, working on the field as I always do. My wife and I spotted Nancy out in the right field. 
talking to a few of the neighbors, and I decided to go out there and find out what's what. And what happened was <clears throat> one of the players hit the softball and hit the, uh, the window frame on the house. <clears throat> and of course, I uh, spoke to the neighbors and I spoke to Nancy. Uh, I did not know who the player was. I told Nancy I would get on the computer and find out who the player was. It was more than one because next to it we had a white house with white siding and the ball punctured the siding. Now a few years ago the white house was damaged and one of my players, we did get it fixed up. We did not have to go to the insurance company. Jack, all can I, teams. Can I just stop you for a second? I'm yes. Sorry. I'm, I'm really sorry. I mean to cut you off. So we have all of that, so you don't have to go through the whole. So oh. I guess it's just. Does anybody have any questions for Jack? Okay. Or any concerns or well, any what I, suggestions? What I, I think I have to mention is that we only have a limited amount of time. So that's why we had citizens input okay. in the beginning. So that was the three minutes that you had. So unfortunately, right. now it's our time to just ask you questions, okay. and that's kind of it. Well, all so does anyone have any? Does anyone have any questions for Jack? Okay. Are all you? teams do okay. have. Right. Uh, property damage, liability. The whole league has it. The city of Fall River Jack, has we, we it. I know that. So yep. we, we just I am, to I am trying to. to I am we have your to, yes. Right I am trying to contact the the, yep, the manager yeah, of the team whose player caused the damage. All right. He is in Florida right, right. now. Let me let me hear from our commissioners. Commissioner, Rio. I think it's time that you put up a net. Are you going to put up a net? I agree, yes. Uh, what happened, we were going to look into it last season, but with the COVID, we did not get going until the middle of July. I am looking next season to put a 60-foot net up in right field, yes. The league will pay for it. It will be a very expensive venture, but I will make sure that it is done. What happens this year when you damage somebody's property? What, what the, happened this year? What, what, how are you going to take care of that? Over the years when the windows were damaged, I did cover it, and then it came to be more expensive, so that's why we have liability, property damage. Each team is covered. They have to get a hold of the insurance company and get the uh, damage form and fill it out and then go ahead with the touch, uh, get in contact with the company and the state commissioner. So Jack. all teams are covered. And that's why I'm trying to get a hold of the manager now. Jack, this, this shouldn't be that difficult. The reason we have leagues, every league, provide liability insurance is so that when something happens, the league, not the individual teams, and this is what's happening, that the, the, the can's getting kicked down the road, and the people now are starting to get frustrated. So the reason we ask every league to provide us with a liability policy is so that you call whatever insurance company that covers your league as a whole. And ultimately, ultimately what this board is saying is you are responsible for your teams, your players, and, and no matter what. So your insurance policy, that insurance policy that you submit to us to get your permit is what, whatever that carrier or whatever is. I agree with you, my teams do have they do have insurance. Well, then it shouldn't be that difficult. Yep. It should be something where you go, this is my, it's like me getting in a car accident with you. This when is my insurance company. Contact my insurance company. They will pay for the damage. The problem is this has gone on and on and on, and the people are now fed up. So they're, they're now when is, getting uh, upset. So when we have to enforce this where this, this needs to be corrected. This just happened at the end of June. As soon as you this got a hold of me, on, I tried Jack. to contact the manager. Okay. Okay. The manager okay. and the player Jack, involved Jack. have to get the form and get it to the insurance company. All okay. teams Jack. are Jack. covered. Stop. We're not going to hear this no more. When is your league up? When is your permit for this league right now up? When is your league done? Sometime in November. Sometime in November. You have until August 30th to get a net or something up there or I'm pulling your permit. There is no way we can do that because well, we do not do have the funds. Property and if you try and do this. that, I That's will it. have all my players and all my league. We will petition the we will petition the mayor on this. I have a, a, a motion. We have no money for that. August 30th, his permit is pulled. Second. I need, a, I need a first and a second. 
First of all, the polls cost five hundred dollars. Do you know what the net costs and to get somebody up there? Do I have a motion? So, I make a motion. Second. Wow. Okay. Commissioner Burns makes the motion that if it's not addressed by August 30th, the permit is going to be pulled. Commissioner Verigo seconds it. All in favor say aye. 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 You need to get on your insurance. Sorry. We're not dealing with this no more. This, this is a, uh, a bad decision, and I will go see the mayor on this. I have a thousand players that play at that field, and all of a sudden you're hitting me with a, a substantial right. bill like this. So okay. Jack, I told Jack, you next season Jack, I would definitely take care of it, Jack, but to do it right now, it's Jack, impossible. You have to understand the position Jack, we're in. We're getting this. emails of people saying this happens every single season. If you have a permit, with, like Nancy said, you say, this is the permit, this is my application, this is my insurance, you should also have liability insurance for the entire league, not necessarily just each individual team. You I have that. A, so then you should call your insurance company and tell them to fix it. This wouldn't even be an issue if that was happening. It's clearly not happening. That, and that's will, why be we're and that will be done. That will be done. And just like last meeting when I asked you about a port john you said you couldn't afford it, but then you give us a nice presentation of the lights. Hold on, I'm speaking. You give us a nice presentation of the lights, and you have a port john in the picture. What happened so here? So obviously you could afford it the rest yeah, but of the what happened here? I'm talking. Lisa, I'm talking. Lisa, Lisa me, Golden I'm talking. of the health department got a hold of me. And Jack, told me the restrictions would change, and I could get a porta john, and I got it floor. right away. The chairman. Has I am not the done floor. speaking. Okay, you had a porta john all the other years. Now COVID strikes, you can't afford it. You're charging the same. No, it wasn't. Hold I on. could afford Hold it. On. The health department Hold told on. me I couldn't have it. And then, Mr. Patel is right here. Did you get your porta john within days? Thank you so much. Okay, you're making a lot more money than their league. I don't want to hear them excuses no more, okay? Then you need to charge more money or whatever, because as soon as I threatened you to say that I was going to have the FRPD up there charging your players for your, your urinating threat, out your, in public your, your in front threat, of kids and your everything, threat did now all of a sudden, me. I had all of a sudden money for the you have a portage on there three days later. I had it. From the I'm health done. department telling me You're I done. couldn't have it. You're done. You're done. We're you on the next, We're next uh, item. Item G. City recreation requests for food, lunch, programs, and Ruggles at softball field. Ruggles Park and softball, uh, excuse me. There's two item agendas here. City recreation, uh, item G, request for food, lunch program, and request for Ruggles softball field. I make a motion to approve. Okay, we have a second. Second now. Commissioner Burns uh, makes the motion to approve. Commissioner Farrier seconds it. All in favor say aye. 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 Second. Item so H, here. request for the, the river and greater for recreation summer cornhole tournament. Is there anybody here to speak on this? Anybody here? Okay, we have the uh, paperwork well, here. Table list? No. Well, no, no, no. I was going to say, no, the first event is this weekend. Oh, okay. I say we, I make a motion to contact whoever, to the Scott, make sure he has all of his permits and they, liability insurance. This make, is going to go through CD Rec. It's all well, going through okay. recreation. Okay. They're already uh, okay. already advertising this and everything, so. Yeah, well, that's I've seen it. That's why I wanted to, yep. I don't want to table it. It is already, uh, it's uh, going so through, uh, it's motion. going through recreation so and the mayor's office. And co co yes. It's co-sponsored co co yeah. by recreation and the mayor's office. Okay. So I'll make a motion to uh, approve this. And make a motion to waive all fees. Waive all fees at this time. Okay. Second. Commissioner Farias made the motion. Commissioner Farias, I mean, excuse me. Commissioner Farias made the motion. Commissioner Burns seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. <clears throat> Item I, BCC soccer team looking to use the field. Use of Brooklyn Park soccer field. We have uh, BCC soccer. It's a men's soccer schedule and a women's soccer schedule. Is there any? Um, there are game? definitely conflicts. I would have to get in touch with. I did um, speak to Fall River Youth Soccer mm -hmm. um, and the leagues that utilize them. Um, we did say games would take precedent over practices, so it would be something that. Uh, I just need the board's permission to 
contact those other organizations and try to work these games as best we can. Do they? Does BCC not have their own soccer field? I don't think so. No. No. <laughs> uh, the other questions I had was uh, they have liability insurance, obviously, and uh, all the things they they will be paying fees because this is for the college. Yes. So they usually, what they usually do is they have to pay a man, but that was when the bathrooms were open. Okay. We no longer, but we haven't, we don't have our bathrooms available there. Okay. So, and the gates are no longer locked. So that would be something, whether the board is charging them the 125 park use fee, even though they're using it for two hours, that's something the board's gonna have to decide. I mean, I mean we, we don't charge other leagues for permits or the school department for permits. So it's a matter of if you're gonna charge BCC. But I would think most of them may be for the residents. I don't have a roster, I did not ask I was gonna say, roster. if it's BCC, probably, they're from everywhere. Yeah, they're um, all over the probably south um, This does not stop until, like we said, uh, I believe it's September. So we still have the August meeting if you would like more information. I just wanted to put it in this package. Yep. Let's uh, can I get a motion to table it and have a representative here I'll for the August a meeting. Motion to table this for our next meeting. Can, have a second. So, second. Can we add a caveat that if somebody can't come, they we give them a list of questions so mm -hmm. that we can make sure that it's exactly. so any questions anybody has, we like hand over to Nancy and Right, and this yeah. way I can send those questions. Because then they out. may not even potentially even need to come if we get all the questions okay. answered. Okay. All right. So Commissioner Farias made that motion. Can you just uh, amend your motion? So is the motion now to to put together a list of questions rather than table the item? Yes. We'll, we can we'll, table it with and then untable it in August. Um, yeah, if they want to come, that you can awesome. Ask them. If not, then we'll just have we need all of our questions answered so we can just figure it out in August. They will and provide questions to right. send to them. Okay. Commissioner Farris made that motion. Commissioner Burns seconded it. All in favor, say aye. 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 Item J, request from Alicia Powell's slash D Hood, Inc. Use of Kennedy Park for Jamaican Independence Day event on August, 20, uh, August 7, 2021, and a third annual Juneteenth event on June 19th, 2022. Um, We're gonna have to do these two separately. No, so the Juneteenth event already happened. I think that's- No, no, no this is for June 20th, next, oh. next year. But we June normally, 19th, the board does 22. not normally accept requests for 2022 yeah. until after January 1 of 2022. And I did inform her of that, but I just mm. wanted the board to vote and have it in, yeah. in our record. Mm -hmm. So if you would entertain those as two separate items. Yep. So we'll first talk about, uh, if you want, we can do the, to move the Juneteenth, uh, make a motion that we'll have to have her request again back in January of 2022, because we don't do nothing until after the 1st of January Second. or anything of next year. So I have a motion to have her re, uh, request this uh, item in January. I make Second. a motion. Make a motion by Commissioner Burns, second by Commissioner Rigo. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, back to item J, request for a Jamaican Independence Day event on August 7, 2021. I make a motion. Grant that. Second. Okay, and all to follow all protocols and everything to check off with all our uh, other city agencies and getting her uh, the list checked off from the health department, building inspectors, all of them, that do the due diligence. Uh, permission to uh, re uh, request to waive all fees. Permission. All right. Do I have a motion to accept this? Yes. I make okay. a motion to accept it. Yeah, by second. And second by Commissioner Burns. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Okay. Item K, request from the YMCA three on three basketball tournament at Highland Park on August 29th, 2021. I make a motion to accept. Okay. Second that. Okay. Make a motion also to waive all fees. Make a motion to waive all fees. Second. Okay. Second. Made, uh, made a motion to uh, waive all fees and accept the, uh, give them the uh, granted permission from Commissioner Farias, second by Commissioner Burns. All in favor say aye. 
Aye. Thank you. Just Ms. Smith will contact you. Item L, uh, request from the Florida Police Department, three and three basketball tournament at Griffin Park on July 24th at 4 p.m. Uh, make a motion that we uh, rent this. And uh, waive all fees? Waive all fees on it. Second. Okay, Commissioner Farris made the motion. Commissioner Burns second it. All in favor say aye. 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 Item M, request from New Life South Coast Church event at Berlin Park. Anybody else have any questions, concerns? The folks are still here. I make a motion to accept. Okay. Second that. Okay, and all right. But well, we have no specific dates. Yes. So I, you know, uh -huh. yep. what's going uh, to come on up, please. So that probably will have to be worked out with the Fall River Youth Soccer as well as if BCC is granted that time. But a Saturday is usually for the youth soccer. Mm -hmm. Could I, I know in the email um, I had requested um, any Saturday in September? Would it be possible to do August twenty eighth? Mm -hmm. Well, no. uh, I think they start August fifteenth. The youth mm -hmm. soccer. I can look or, or I can reach out to them and mm -hmm. come up with a date. But it really needs to be something where. Um, maybe the two of you can even work together with utilizing some. I don't know what. Who, if you have your own teams that play, do you have your own teams? Yeah, we have just four teams. Okay. Yep. Um, I can see what their schedule is mm -hmm. as far as that goes. And, and your time, do you have times listed here? We were looking from like um, set up at starting at oh, nine. Oh yeah, you have nine to six, you had said to me in a conversation. Just so that we clean up correctly. Yeah, so I know that I was gonna, the youth soccer uses it those specific times. So I whether they would be able to relinquish one of those dates, I don't know. I was what gonna about Travasso? That's what I was going to say. How about Travasso's? That's how the youth But there's how no use. soccer nets there. There's no soccer nets, but we, uh, do we have any way you can get soccer nets? No. All right. Let's see what we can. I mean, right. the board can. We'll approve it pending, 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 pending we can that we can fit them in somewhere. Um, okay. And then if they approve the actual event, it's just a matter of us coming up with a date that doesn't offset the fall of youth soccer because they have hundreds of kids, right. I know. So if they lose one of those days, maybe we can arrange it for a date before they start. In September? Or, or maybe they don't start in August. If I can do that August oh, yeah. 28th. Oh, that would be great. So I'll, you guys can work together and okay. she'll work with the other leagues I'll too. I'll see what, the, to see what would be least, the least inconvenient to like uproot yeah. their schedule. Maybe, yep. they can, maybe they start after a certain date. Maybe there's only practices. So I'll work with you and them to see if we can come up with a date at some point, either August or September. Okay, that works. And once you have all of that, then uh, You'll just have to work out uh, with the liability insurance with yep. the Smith and everything. Yep, we can and we'll do that. deal with that. Uh, we request no fees also. Yes, we will. Okay. Waive okay. No fees. Request no fees uh, and then uh, waive all fees, sorry. And then also uh, permission to give them approval if Ms. Smith can work out a date with Far Reed Soccer and the other leagues to give them a date that they can utilize. Mm -hmm. uh, have a motion on that? I'll uh, make a motion on second. Second by Commissioner Burns. Made a motion by Ms., uh, Commissioner Farrier, second by Commissioner Burns. All in favor say aye. Aye. Thank you. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Request uh, item N, request from Christian McCloskey, Positive, uh, Positivity Rock Police in Maplewood Park. Can I? Can I? Can I? I make a motion to approve. Uh, I know Ms. Smith had one concern. No, to, to prove the flag location, that was my thing. I just wanted to know which, because there was three pictures. One yep. was a monument, yep. one was, is that just a demonstration, like just to show us how you do them? That's where the, it's dedicated. Right. So the, the, the flagpole would be the location. I was just showing the monument, which is 25, 30 yards to the Away. left. And then yes. the other picture, I think, was just showing what rocks and around the peace pole, pole right would okay look like. so basically it's the flagpole location mm -hmm. right. yep. I, I don't have a problem 
putting them there as long as people don't scatter them because I think there is grass around Kids there. Are gonna grab it. So if it does become an issue, Kristen will have to just talk about it and maybe mm -hmm. try to find somewhere else. If you want to attempt well, it, that's up to the board. I was going to make more. Is that grassy area going to be in the way of guys weed whacking, cutting or anything? Well, they do cut there, but if they, they, I think he's talking about that cement circle at the base of the pole. So, so that was. Do you want to put it on the grass, pitch? or if that area, because it does seem like the grass seems burnt and mm -hmm. almost like dirt, and even if it's just for this year, create like a rock garden just on that circle. Well, you better put a lot of rocks there that my grass is not going to grow through, or else I'm going to get the heat. <laughs> my other thing is, if you want to make this a permanent thing, pick it up is maybe dig up that grass, put some cement, and they cement the rocks in. He just said it's cement. you got to cement them. So, so this is the first time I've dealt with kindness rocks. So it's, yeah. this is, well, in the whole I'm just kind, wondering that the whole purpose of kindness rocks is yeah. you leave a message. positive message, but you can also take one and bring it somewhere to somewhere else. else. So that, oh, that was the, the okay. whole okay. premise of it. But it's also ensuring that's not interfering with any maintenance or landscaping mm -hmm. or so it's in a spot that's not going to interfere with that. Right. I make a motion to put it on the flagpole and let's say you got a thousand people leaving rocks then we can revisit it right, and take exactly. up some grass space. Yes, I'd say okay. do it as a right. pilot yep. mm -hmm. location and take it from there. All right. I motioned uh, by Commissioner Burns to accept it and do it as a, a pilot program. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Commissioner uh, Burns made the motion. Commissioner Farrier seconds it. All in favor say aye. Aye. Ms. Smith, it's going to be easy. It's only two commissioners that are making all the motions. That's right. <laughs> I don't know what happened to Everybody else got laryngitis today. <laughs> the minutes Listen, are going to be very easy. Here, you're not here. And Helen's over here. We're going to have to give her the mic. All right. <laughs> Item O, request from Kennedy Park Little League Baseball to extend their permits past July. I make a motion to approve. <laughs> okay. Second that. So, Commissioner Burns made the motion to uh, approve the request to extend their permits past July. Commissioner Farry seconds it. All in favor say aye. 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 Commissioner Sylvia abstains. Item P, notification from Maplewood chosen to host the New England Cal Ripken Baseball Tournament July 15th. Is that July 15th to the 23rd? Or yes. So it's yes. that whole week? Yes. All right. July 15th to the 23rd, winner advances to the Cal Ripken 10U World Series. Okay. Do we have permission to let them have the use of the Maplewood Park to have this tournament? I make a motion that we have, make them, they can use the Maplewood Park. Okay. We have a second. Second. Commissioner Farias makes the motion to give uh, permission to Maplewood to host the Cal Ripken uh, Regional Tournament. Commissioner Burns seconds it. All in favor say aye. 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 Item Q, request to have Oak Grove gates uh, open at the holidays for Christmas. Come on up. So this is a request to have the Oak Grove Avenue gates open during holidays. Um, the Prospect Street, Prospect Street gates are already open. After the Father's Day holiday, um, we did get a call, and I think the mayor's office got some calls as well, requesting that we do this. Um, so I bring it to the board for their consideration. And FRPD is going to be doing it, so there's no overtime cost for us. Yeah, oh, FRPD oh, already opens open? the gates, so we would have them open the, uh, oh, yeah, the gates on Oak Grove Ave as well. Why is it right. close? The request to uh, give permission that we can have the Oak Grove gates open on holidays. Don't Wait. all the other cemeteries have their gates open yeah. on holidays? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, well, yes, that's yes. why we're trying our, to get our, yeah. in the same I want to be clear that our gates are open. This would just be the, uh, the gates at Oak Grove Avenue. Yeah. So the Prospect Street gates are open seven days a week, but there is a request to open, and the Oak Grove Avenue gates are only open Monday through Friday while staff is there. So those close at 3 o'clock. The request is to open those Oak Grove Avenue gates on the, on the holiday weekends as well or the holiday specifically, yeah. for example, Mother's yep. Day and Father's Day to make it a little easier for yep. people to come and visit their loved ones. Yep. I think it's a good request. Uh, I have a motion to give permission. I'll make a motion to have the F for the spot and open the gates on holidays. Second. Requ uh, second. Commissioner Farris made the motion. Commissioner uh, Burns seconds it. All in favor say aye. 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 <clears throat> 
<coughs> Item R, acceptance of uh, acceptance uh, and award of the bids for the Oak Grove Cemetery expansion. Okay, so I sent a letter uh, to the commissioners outlining the five bids that we received for the expansion. <coughs> um, this would be for a general contractor to conduct and oversee all of the construction for the expanded burial space. Um, it says here the request is to award it to the lowest bidder, which is KR Resendiz. Um, I would like to modify the contract amount to just be $962,969. Um, at this point, after talking further with our um, consulting engineer and Mr. Perry, uh, we feel it's <coughs> beneficial to move forward without the additive alternates um, and do that, do that at a later time when we actually need the burial space. Um, and that the, um, the primary bid would give us sufficient space um, for future interments and interments. So we're only gonna be doing the two and then? Correct, the, the, the we other would do one the one, the the one set ones. of the cremation niches in the center um, and then we would forego the left and right set. Um, the base contract does include all the foundation work um, so in the future, when we're ready for those uh, cremation niches, um, we would just, we could work with a private vendor um, on those niches and have them installed, um, similar to the ones we had installed in, I believe it was October of 2018. Um, we did it on our own. We didn't need um, significant contracting help to do that. Okay. All right. Any commissioners have any questions or concerns? Okay. All right, uh, just uh, have a motion to accept this bid for K and award the contract to K.R. Resendiz in the amount of $962,969. I make a motion. I second the motion. Okay. I just want to make the mo uh, amend the motion that we uh, make sure that uh, the chairman will be signing this contract, right? To award yes. this contract, thank you. Okay, uh, Commissioner Burns made the motion, Commissioner Farris. Second, all in favor say aye. 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 Item S, request for a memorial tree planting near the gates at Oak Grove Ave. Oak Grove. We received a request um, from a city resident to plant a tree uh, along Oak Grove Avenue um, in the location of a tree that, uh, that had fallen during a, um, a storm. The tree would be planted in memory of Adam Frazier, who spent his life um, working with troubled and disadvantaged children. Um, I think the only thing additional to note um, from their email is that uh, Mr. Frazier is not interred at Oak Grove Cemetery. Um, so. How do you guys feel? Do you agree with the tree and all of I know the species of it and all? Yeah, we, we worked with the um, with the family as well as uh, with the requester, as well as with our arborist to determine a, a tree species that's sufficient for the area. Yep. Um, and it would be nice to replace that that tree along the fence line there on Oak Grove Ave. Is there going to be any plaques, future things to say who that tree is for? So they they've done in the past a small about like a two foot flat marker goes on the ground um, near on the tree th in the ground okay. um, doesn't create any additional maintenance for us because it's in ground all right a motion to approve this request make a motion second. A second second Commissioner Farias makes the motion Commissioner Burns seconds it all in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. request uh, item T request from the Bristol County Savings Bank trolley tour visit to Oak Grove Cemetery and slash Lizzie Borden Block. We received a request from Bristol County Savings Bank. Um, their prime time program offers uh, members of the bank various activities throughout the year. Um, in August, they're doing a tour of Fall River um, around Lizzie Borden. Um, they would like to bring the trolley into Oak Grove and down to um, the cemetery plot um, so that way the the people who are on the tour get the opportunity to visit the grave um, and then they will leave and continue their tour throughout the city elsewhere. 
um, they do they are willing to provide and I have asked them to provide a certificate of liability insurance from the trolley company um, my recommendation is to approve in the past we've had buses just show up unannounced um, so to have someone actually come through with a request ahead of time um, is beneficial and I think we can accommodate them are you my only thing are you gonna be on that trolley giving the tour I won't be no <laughs> <laughs> Is it like a ghost tour, or is it just like a... I think they're visiting the uh, house on 2nd Street. Um, I think they plan to go by... Uh, Maplecroft. The other Maplecroft house, um, and then the cemetery plot. Nice. I make a motion to approve. We have a second. I'll second it. Commissioner Burns makes a motion to approve uh, the request from the Bristol County Savings Bank. Trolley tour at Grove Cemetery, seconded by Commissioner Farias. All in favor, say aye. Hi. 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 Sorry. Okay, item U. Corresponds with the Florida National Baseball Permits and Field Requests. Can you guys come up, please? Uh, Ms. Mining? Wait a minute. I still have her on. Oh. No, I have to give you guys one. Yep, yeah, one more thing, yes. One second. Probably, because uh, that came in. Yep. Pass this down. This is her. She was talking about for the craft fair. Joey. This is added. Well, no, it's actually part of. It's part of the thing. Part of her request. Part of her request. Permit. This is the Angel Anonymous. This is the Angel Anonymous. Yes, she wants to give the money to Angel Anonymous. So these were, are these two separate requests, or is it for the craft okay, fair? Well, I put in the request for the craft fair. I don't know what the other ish things were to be discussed. No, the craft. Fair. I just got. What, to be what you have here for the craft fair is they would like to have, they normally have a tournament, yep, yep. but they yeah. want to have the craft fair to mm -hmm. donate the money instead. So that's what you have. Yep. The other thing is just correspondence that the board had wanted to address because I didn't address it in the end. I stopped answering the emails. So gotcha. I was asked, just, just leave that be, stop answering the emails. And so that was one thing. And then this came okay. in and I, I wanted her to be able to, move forward with this yeah. uh, if we didn't do it this month then the 14th would have been like a week away from her event so yep. I put this in as well um, okay. in regards to the craft fair I make a motion to approve as long as no one else has any questions or concerns anybody else have any questions or concerns she's just replacing the craft fair because they, they canceled their tournament and this craft man money is going to go to Andy on Onyx instead it's an annual event that they do, except this craft fair is new. Any so do you charge like by the table? Is that what yeah, it is? Yeah, it's like $15. And then the whatever table. they get, you donate to them. We'll do so raffles and things like like we would typically do during the tournament. Um, we would hold raff, you know, raffle items or whatever that would raise more money. And so you'll let the board know the donation that you're making to them? Yep. The monetary, yeah. like what the actual amount is? Yeah. Yep, yeah. we can. Okay, do you have a motion to approve? Uh, Craft fair, with your permission? I make a motion. Do you have a second? Second. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Is there a fee involved? Is there going to be a fee involved? Uh, no, we'll waive all fees. I Sorry. make a motion to waive the fees. Yes. Second that. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. The reason why I called you guys in is <coughs> just myself, Mr. Perry. Ms. Smith and everything's been CC'd on all these emails back and forth between yourself and mm -hmm. Mr. Vining. So then I'm getting Council Peckham and everybody else calling us and everything back and forth. And why I, call, I told her to haul all the emails and I hadn't stopped is because we said at previous meetings there's going to be one spokesperson mm -hmm. for a lead. It's either you 
or he's going to be, Mr. Vine is going to be, you're going to be designated for the spokesperson for Forever National. Yep. And he's going to be for the hitman. Because we're not going to go back and forth with this because this is the thing. Social media, we gave you permits. We gave you permission to, I even called you down and said, is Diamond going to interfere with your permit? You had told us originally Tuesdays and Thursdays and Wednesdays and Fridays. Then we're finding out that you want to practice at uh, uh, Lafayette on Saturdays. We have this in the meeting, in the meetings. I, and that, hold on. Hold on a second. It's Where going back. In, this is going back and forth on so, uh, on different text messages and social media and everything that we're seeing is there's other leagues contacting us that oh we we can't hold our games at Lafayette. Can we hold them in Swansea and everything? There was never no mentions of games being played. It was only for practices. Yep. And then I don't know we're hearing this from other leagues about. and everything that, oh, it's the park department doesn't want us, they, they don't want to give us permission to do field, uh, field improvements at Lafayette and everything. We yeah. never discussed that. We discussed Duma. That never, let me just make something very clear. Yeah. I made it very clear to my entire board and those that aren't official board members yep. that the reason why we did not have home games at the field is because we didn't have the $5,000 to do the field work. Yep. So if people wanted to pitch in and come up with that money, then we would address the field work. Unfortunately, we have to have, let the organization know whether or not we have fields by like March. Yep. So we knew that wasn't gonna happen. So I never, never, and I made it very clear why and at that point, there was no porta johns. Like, we just didn't have enough time. And I made it very clear to my board members. So the things that you're getting, I really wish you would have contacted me directly, yep. so we could have a conversation about that. Because I well, they're actually coming from Chris, and that's why we're having about, this conversation. We have all the emails here. About Back home and games. Forth. All the board members have these emails now. About we shared this with all the about emails. So you just said other yourself. leagues are contacting you. And yeah. we're hearing this on from other leagues and that, but we're also looking at your emails back and forth between Mr. Vining and Nancy what and yourself. The, Both no, of you. I have okay. to say, Brandy, it yeah. was not, this was an email yeah. that was happening between Chris and myself. Mm -hmm. And I had said, you know, just, and I can read the emails, you know, let me know just for, you know, uh, first I asked about liability insurance because I hadn't heard from Yep, them. and, and then that was addressed. Was, they sent it to you. I'm like, they didn't send me anything. And I said, can you please send me your dates yep. for practices? And then it was, you know, the 14U team is um, this day. And I said, because there was some confusion. And then what I got back is, tell me when it's approved and I'll practice because I can't deal with the arguing about how the field's not being used. I know there were three dates. Um, they're not even anchors there that dug up. I know Brandy sent you a picture, and the last I left that with you, Brandy was you had you said I had ordered you had ordered a couple of anchors. I ordered and them we're for Duma. Check. I ordered them for Duma, and I sent you because you okay. Need so to here's hold on. my so, question. So here's my question: If you know that you order anchors for Duma, then why wouldn't you order them for Lafayette? Why would that be? Because I'm not playing games there. I don't need bases. For practice. According to the, according to what was said, no, my, let me talk. Let me uh, talk. According to what is being sent to us, we have told you we can't play games at Lafayette. We have to talk to athletic directors, whom, many whom whom are city councilors or park boards in their cities, and have not uh, about not having a field. I was told by those people that they watch the park board meetings and that we should leave Fall River because it is an embarrassing situation. Mm -hmm. It is nonsense, hypocrisy, mm -hmm. and when their kids won't approve work that costs the city nothing. Leagues and teams have told us again and again not to put a cent in the park. Mm -hmm. I personally know that people were contacted and it was said the park board did not give us permission to fix the field. And it had to do with an AAU team. So that has to do with Lafayette Park. So this, you never came before this board and asked to do repairs at Lafayette Park. Actually, you, uh, you came before this board and asked to do the repairs at Dumont, no. which are for teams that are 12 and younger. Your two AAU Nancy? teams are 14U and 18U. I don't, I'm not trying to argue, but the point is the information is getting out there that we're not cooperating with you. And that's not the message we want to send. In November, my original request was for both fields. 
Dumont and Lafayette, okay? And I got cut down because of the amount of money. Because it was over $10,000. Can I finish my thought times. if I'm supposed to let you speak? Hold on one second. Go ahead. Go ahead. Speak. So during those two meetings in November, I think maybe December, and then I got pushed to March, which was now too late, okay? I was told, scale it down, cut it down. Okay, well, the field that needed the most work, which we were pretty sure we weren't going to get Lafayette because I've been told many times that my permit will be pulled if I decide to not stay Little League. Okay? So, but that's let, no, let's get honest here. Let's get honest here. I have been told by members of this park board that if I didn't stay Little League, my permits would be pulled. That was not, that, I know this for a fact right that's not me, this Commissioner Burns. Me, me and call, Commissioner Burns call, never spoke I that. I call by name. So, I'm saying a general um, um, statement. We can have a conversation privately later. I mean, if you want to call a spade a spade, I mean, we're so here. So Jeff like, Sylvia has told me if we left Little League, I would lose my permit because he sits on the park board and no, that's not what Don't. That's not what I hold said. on, hold on. What I said was, oh there's so many applied for a permit that was literally that field has always been. Removed. This is going back to years, that's Jeff. Right. Years. Okay. Years. Okay. okay. So in November, okay. I, in November, I brought to this board a contract for both fields, Dumont and Lafayette. Then, due to the payment plan option, you guys wouldn't, you know, didn't. I don't want to say you guys. Excuse my, it wasn't. All right, so I'm going to take this back for a second. Just give me a second. I am a director of finance, so I know all the ins and outs when it comes to accounting. And I was very new when that came across, and I remember that. And that's fine. And no, just give me a second, honey. Better speak so first. what I'm saying is when you had come forward, I think for myself, coming into it completely new, mm -hmm. didn't know anything, at first it was, we have all the funds, we could pay for this up front if we want to. We have a, um, a company that will do it. Okay, but we said we needed a little more information. Mm -hmm. So then it came back, you got the bids, you showed us the bank accounts, but then it was, the bid showed a payment plan. And, it, and our heads were like, all right, if you can pay it up front, why are you doing a payment plan? And that's when you said, well, if we can do a payment plan, it makes more sense because why pay up front if you can spread it out? Totally makes sense. I know how to budget. I love budgeting, so I get it. But then it was just, on and on and on of different things that were added, prices, the funds weren't matching up. So I, from that aspect, that is why we said to scale down, to make sure you didn't go under, uh, like upside down. Mm -hmm. And from my perspective, that's how I was mm -hmm. basically putting everything together to make sure I want the kids to play, you want the kids to play. Mm -hmm. uh, play. The best scenario is do one now and one later. And that's where that came from. Exactly. So I don't want, I did ask for permission to right, do Lafayette. You, you said you didn't want to have your games there. You weren't going to do it if we had to have a portage on. It was we couldn't a have, lot of restrictions. Right, we did right, not which know is why about. in the end we but decided. But I just wish that when, I the, never, when the information goes out, it goes out correctly. That's all. Not We're, we're not working with you. As far as the poll. So the one poll thing poll that I will say is that I never get, I get no. I never get a, okay, how about the, the first time that has ever happened is when I initially put in the contract for the field work. How about we scale back? How about it was more of a collaboration with the park board? In the past, I've got no, 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 no. Well, you got me well, now. That's, so not no. the, that's the past. This is the present. Okay, so why am I still paying for things that happened in the past? Okay, but we're, we're looking at the different stuff, and I'm reading these emails, and, I, and the yes. other thing is so, I, rem I remember I remember clearly because I was part of that email, you originally asked that the anchors were dug up at Lafayette and Miss Smith was going to order them, and then come to find out what, there was no games in that, so that I don't know whatever happened. Hold on one second. Never happened that. We looked at our item. It's right on the city agenda. The city website, park rules. Leagues are responsible for their anchors. Yep. Not so the park department. My That's email to her was 10. an FYI. Someone dug this up. Yep. I have it so that... It's not laying, a metal anchor is laying yeah. around for someone to get beaten with. Yeah. FYI, I have it. I don't know who is going to replace that. Yeah. I wasn't having games, so I don't need to replace it. Okay. However, Diamond is, well, Diamond doesn't have anchors, and I'm not well, paying Diamond, Diamond, for Diamond. Diamond, Diamond didn't come, after, after the meeting, Diamond decided to go elsewhere. I'm just saying. And that was an FYI to you guys, that if Diamond tries to play, there is no base anchor. Well, I have to tell you, Derby played at North Park, and they played without base anchors. Okay, okay. and that's so, fine. So, so at this point, my understanding is, 
I know that your league had taken on the senior league, and there was also a men's league that played there. And and fortunately for you guys, they did do a lot of maintenance on the field. No, they so didn't. It was something no, they that didn't. No, they didn't. Dennis did all of the maintenance. Okay, so now Dennis is gone. Well, no, he's not. He's not running it, but he still does the field work. Okay, so so, so he just lined the fields for practices because parents okay, were so complaining about the point. field. The last time I said is, does Dennis know where these bases came from? And you said, I'll check with Dennis. And the last I heard, Dennis was in Florida. So yeah. when that came to be, I figured. You spoke to Dennis, Dennis put the anchors in, because I never heard any more, until it got thrown back at, you know, we're, we're no good, we're the Well, yes, because and, I go to Sybil and, and to I try get, to play interleague with them, and they're like, whoa, is it okay, because your park board has an issue with out-of-town kids playing on your fields. <laughs> okay, thanks. Yeah, they do, but you know what? Well, as long I think as it's I interleague, take the it's the front fun. of what this park board decides. Unfortunately, I am the contact person, but when I'm relaying this information, I mean, I'm just saying, I, no one came to me, do you have your AAU stuff? I reached out to you guys and said, hey, not sure what's going on with your AAU stuff. Do you have your, your liability? Do you have this? Because I'm reaching out to know. you. And yeah, because we didn't know yet, Nancy. When I know, I... Well, the point is you're looking for permits and you're looking for whatever and you don't have the liability insurance. So we're, so we're, we did have liability insurance. Okay. I've had it since day one. At the, that time, we weren't sure if we were using Lafayette to practice on or not because we had rented a space. This email is May and June. Okay. That I'm asking about the AAU liability. Correct. correct? And I forwarded that you. They had told me they had already they asked for your information because they said they were sending it to you directly. And then and we they forwarded. Never did. Okay. Well, then we rectified it and got it to you immediately. Like, I, I, what do you want me to do? Right. So when I ask, what days are you using? We I don't need to get back. Okay. Give us whatever you want. I have to reserve So you fields. said, Brandy so said, how about, okay, well, Brandy said 17 or 18 you would be on Wednesday and Friday, so that's what we're issuing your permit for. Done. Because it doesn't matter what days we practice. If that's the days you're giving me, those are the days you're giving me. But the point is we weren't looking to give, we were giving, looking to give you the days that you wanted. All we were doing is asking which were the days. Right. So we can and know he gave that you if days Amber and you comes said, in and she wants Tuesday, I can say, I'm right. sorry, Tuesday's But he gave not you taken. days and well, you said, well, those are different than what Brandy said. So he said, okay, well, what did Brandy say? Just give us those days. No, that's not how the email went. Oh, my God. Do I need to read it? I just said. We're having this argument over two lousy days. Two. Okay, I'm not going to argue. We're not having an argument over the like last I'm trying to help Ms. Martin, no, hold on, hold on a second. It's because you know something? The public at large email us and blast us on social media Who that we, the public at large. I don't know what All the is. public, the public of the city of Florida. Okay. Do you watch social media that they blast us left and right that nobody follows rules and everything? The rules that we follow in that? You ask for one thing and then you're doing something differently. No. So now they want us to hold you accountable. So hold me accountable. That's what we're doing. And okay. you're getting all bent out of shape. No, because and when believe me, he and said, believe me, when he I see the comments. With the two I days, see the comments. She either okay? said. She and you comment on a lot of them. Yeah. I actually, see your I comments. I do. I do. Okay. Okay? <laughs> because a lot of the times I'm paying for issues that happened before I was here. Okay, when I first took over, my first initial email to Nancy was, hi, I'm new. I've never been involved in this. What are the rules? What is it I'm supposed to doing? And guess what I got? Nothing. Okay, because I have my emails back to 2016. So do I. And I will give the board these emails. The, the, the race Just like the last season. Stop it. You're not going to come here and attack on it. You're not going to come in and attack Brandy, The raising of the voice is exactly what these emails did. Yep. We asked for information and we're saying, what is it that you need? And you're like, just give me what you want. Because That's he gave you days and you, you said Brandy gave different days. Okay, no, well, didn't. what were those days that do she Do I need to read what I said? Do I need to read what I said? And, and you, the email was with you, Chris. Mm -hmm. All I said was... The 14U team, is this from you? This is you. The 14U team, this is what Chris said, is such and such a day. The 18U team is such and such a day. Once the high school ends, tell me when it's approved and we'll practice then because I can't deal with arguing about times on a field that's not being used. Now, does that sound that was like the I'm being what confrontational? No, it doesn't sound what like I'm being that, confrontational. Nancy? There were previous emails in, relate, in regards to that. Exactly. But I wanted to get this together and give Good. the final notice. Ms. Vinan, I'm not done with you. To get this I'm done. done. Well, well, guess we're what? Done. We're not no. done with some stuff. So, so we would have okay. no misconception about, about what, You're gonna was, represent what her? days 
were okay. available at Lafayette Park because I did have other leagues looking to use fields. And if I did, I had to say, Tuesday, Wednesday, Saturday, and Friday are not available. That's all it was. There was and that's when I said to you, Chris, no one is arguing. We just need to know what is reserved and what is not. Diamond did tell us they needed the permit, so I'm not sure why they, would, they didn't use the field. Also, the park department has never supplied bases for leagues, and even if we did, I can't buy off Amazon because what Brandy had forwarded me was Amazon. I will pass your concerns and information along to the board. That was, as this is information they are requesting. I got back from you, we aren't looking for bases. The metal inserts that every field needs to put bases on were stolen in a city park. You can order them from anywhere. You were showing, uh, we were showing you the item when you asked. It should not be up to us to supply those for a city park. We don't supply home plates. We don't supply the pitch and rubbers. No, you're right, I do. Park department does. I'm just letting you know that no one looking to play, uh, no one who's looking to play a game, anyone who's looking to play a game needs them. We are using Lafayette for practices this year and have to schedule all our name, uh, away games, uh, all our games away after the debacle about trying to get the work approved. This is not someone who's looking to be nice and have a nice little conversation. This is someone who's looking to be confrontational. So what I did was said, you're not going to get confrontational, and I'm not going to get confrontational back. I said it to the park board chair and said, and I didn't answer that, and you sent me another email that said, we were told this is a joke, a hypocrisy, get out of Fall River, we should leave. Every single time you people come to this table, you say, everywhere else we pay to play. Do you pay to play here? No. So what they do as a sixth man on a basketball team or whatever, a guy coming off the bench, we depend on these leagues to help us provide these services. So in exchange for carte blanche on a taxpayer's field, you might put in some base anchors. You might put, Kennedy does it, Maplewood does it, I don't hear anything. When I emailed the guy from the, from the, the baseball league and said, hey Josh, just a heads up, want to let you know that one of the base anchors uh, were stolen from Kennedy, the girl from Dumont has one. He goes, thanks for the heads up. What does that mean? All these years, people have understood that that's their responsibility. All of a sudden, I don't know, Dumont has amnesia. No, you had said that Once you would replace them when they were stolen. So that was why we had sent the information. All right. And I also said, she, the last that was left was she was going to talk to Dennis because Dennis was the ones who put in the, put in the bases. I have requests from that league saying, can we install these type of bases? I said, install what you're going to use. That's what people use. You, Dennis has put in bases. The guy before him put in bases. All of a sudden, I don't put in bases at, at, at Kennedy. I don't put in bases. You know, it's unfortunate. And I think it's really, the, the, the real issue here is, it's unfortunate that you guys had a, a, a tough year this year with trying to put your, your league together or to, to get out of the league and do an independent organization. And unfortunately, it's been difficult. I understand that. But don't take your difficulty out on us. I've done nothing but help you. When this board wanted to, to turn things down, I'm like, you know what? They can do it in, in, in phases. I have always come forward and stuck up for this. For you guys, but yet on social media, I'm bashed. On people who, in other organizations with AAU teams, oh, the park board isn't doing anything for us. Enough is enough, my friends. Let's so take on your responsibility. If that's what you're going to do, because if your 30 kids can't play there, I'm sure Mr. Patella will take them. I'm sure Maple will take them. Those kids are going to play. But I don't think that this board should be disrespected the way it's been disrespected by this league. Yep. Period. And so. The other thing is, so this packet of emails, what I did was, because I'm the only one that's been involved with the emails going back and forth and seeing it. So when City Council Peckham contacted me, because you guys contacted him, I ordered, I ordered Ms. Smith, oh yes you did, yes you guys did, okay? Because they've been down at City Council meetings and everything, that knowledge that they went down to Dumont Field and that to see all improvements and everything that you guys were doing. Because I, they contacted us. Okay. But so we shared. I had her share him the email so that way everybody's on the same page now. The rest of the board's all on the same page. There's not gonna be no more his, uh, mysteries here. Okay? How everybody's been. The other thing is too, 
We were good enough. You're the only league in this city that does not have the solicitation certificate from the Secretary of State. You always keep having this problem. We gave you till July 31st. July 31st, August 1st, no more banners go up. If I don't have a solicitation for 2021, you're not having no more permits. Well, you cannot have any more advertisement, okay? So that's what you can address that with your wife. If you want, I can have Ms. Smith reach out to the Secretary of State and see what the concern is, because I can ask Mr. Patello, I can ask maybe one and all of them. They all have their permit. You're the only one that doesn't have this. Person, and she well, said she that they have out, not so. gotten to the, oh, I'm the one who's contacted uh, right. Jillian from the AG's yep. department. They have not per, gotten to 2021 yes. date, yeah. to the 2021 date yet. All right, so but my, but what you need to contact them and tell them that they need to get on it. Because why? I, if I she were, said no one has ones that have 2021 on the date. Well, I can show you them. Do you have one, Mr. Patella? Thank you. Maplewood has it. Maplewood South has it. And everything. Have it. You guys are the only ones. I, I, I wouldn't make it up. I mean, I'm, I'm like, I'm not saying you are. Wrong. I'm just, I've con I contacted her again this week, and sh that was her response that they have not gotten to the 20. What is her name? I, no, I would, uh, no, I would ask her. Tell her that other leagues in the city of Fall River have, have provided that to the park department, yep. and your permit is in jeopardy if, or your yep. advertising is in if jeopardy. If they can reach, if, if you she, can't do it, and if she can reach out to Mrs. Smith directly, I will be and there. That way, Mrs. Smith is our eyes and ears, and she will get back to us I with do, this. It's Jillian. It's Trishitty. That's T R I S C H I T. -T Just pass her along but Mrs. Smith's information and tell her to, if she can get in touch with Mrs. Yeah, Smith. I, Email there, me her there. names, please. Yep. Well, what? If you can email me her yes. name. Uh -huh. Because it's it's awfully odd. I mean, I don't understand I don't, why you people would be the only ones. I paid back in February. I have the receipt that showed I paid for it. I sent the paperwork in. and Are all the taxes and everything filed up to date? Because if something's not filed right, nope, they won't issue it. They've said it. everything is up to date. Everything is fine. They just have, they have not. Their backlog is so large that they have not gotten to it. I mean, all I've right. had this since the beginning of before the season started. So that's why I, like I said, I don't understand. And I've followed up But every if month. anyone has helped this league move forward, how, do this, do that. I mean, April 27th, I, I on Easter weekend, got the email with your um, uh, proposal or whatever that had to go to the Corporation Council. I sent it on Easter to the Corporation Council. So I happened to go into my email. It went up to him, uh, Easter was April 4th. I, I can't help what happens up there. But yet, it's, we're holding it up, we're holding it up. I called, I asked Brandy, did you get information? No, I haven't. Finally, we got to the bottom of it, April 27th. I, I have emails where I say, I know you had an issue with your second field. Do you want me to, to, to uh, have the guys work on the first field, the third field? Just drop the dirt like you usually do. You know, there's only so many times that I'm gonna get slapped that I'm not gonna, you know, wanna fight back here. Enough is enough, I've done everything. Uh, you, the, the dirt has glass. Everybody gets the same dirt. Mm -hmm. This seems to be a problem. And, I and it's with one league. And I, I don't understand it. They, the, everybody else can maintain their fields. They use the same dirt as everybody else. Listen, we understand it's a struggle to become a Maplewood. It's a struggle. 50 years those people have been there with volunteers and kids and parents and Kids of kids all playing in the same place. It's very difficult to do, especially at this stage in the game. And unfortunately, when you left Little League, it made it even harder. Because I don't think you depend. I don't think you thought you would only get 30 kids. I think you thought you were going to get more kids, and it, it ended up. It didn't quite work out. And I, and I, hey, that's unfortunate. And the AAU thing, you know, if you're going to try to put together an AAU team and you can't get 12 kids from Fall River. Don't go through the motions. There are other AAU teams that these kids can play on. There are both, we had over 80%, and it's the first year that we've had it, was from all over the surrounding town. I understand, but you barely put together two teams, is what I'm saying, without the out-of-town things that brought the question up. And, and it's unfortunate. And one of the things we wanted to be able to do was to be open to fall over. Many leagues require that you have to play in that town. So like Maplewood requires your kids to have to play for Maplewood to have an AAU. So if someone from Kennedy or from North Park or from our league wanted to play, they can't. So they yeah, but have there are the AAU teams, there's the Rebels, there's the Right, but you have to leave the city to do that. 
that's my point. Yeah, we're trying to bring a team to the city that doesn't yeah. require. Right, but what I'm saying to you is that didn't quite work out because you didn't get enough of kids from the city to 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 make that team. So it didn't really work out. You Unfortunately, had to get kids there from weren't enough state, kids from these, another these, state. We had a couple miles of away. And I'm what? just saying it's an unfortunate thing. I know you're trying to yep. make ends meet, but. It doesn't seem like they're meeting, and it seems like it's becoming very frustrating mm -hmm. for your league and everybody else in it. And don't take it out on us, because on April 27th, you guys had permission to do your fields. You had three fields and 30 kids. I think you can operate on two other fields with 30 kids while you repair the one field that you wanted to come before us. And, but it, don't make us the scapegoat. If you don't have the money, or you don't have the parents, or you don't have the volunteers, don't make this board or the board or the Fall River Park Department the scapegoat. It's unfortunate. It's very difficult to get volunteers. I understand that. But and April 27th, the Corporation Council and your league was self told, go ahead, do the field. And and when when I get texts and get emails saying, Oh, how come you're not letting these people play in Lafayette Park? A, a number, May 6th meeting, your wife came to the meeting and said, I'm not looking for games. I'm looking for practices. Right. Okay, so, then, so then don't tell those people that we didn't give you Lafayette Park because you didn't ask for it. Bottom back line. In March was when we would have needed to have it. All right, I feel like we're just going to spin in circles yeah, at this point. We are spinning tires. Mm -hmm. Let's get in tired of it. But the board needs to be respected, and I, I am only, don't, don't kill the messenger, because I am the messenger for this board, and yet I'm the one that receives these emails, and I am not going to answer them. And we I am not going to answer notified. those emails that are, are looking to and butt I, I, heads. I, I, I apologize for that. I'm, I was upset, and I apologize if I was taking it on you. I mean, I, I also know that after the city council meeting, there was a park board meeting the next night that we weren't aware of and we were on, we were at forefront on the agenda that we had no knowledge that we were being talked about. She also went to the park board meeting uh, to the city council and trashed us. We were invited. She, she went to the city council meeting. Yes, and I've been sure, and she turned in, she tore us apart. What can we do? And I don't want to keep going. We're around. willing to work with you. All right. And that, it, this this back and forth is not going to be no. conducive to, uh, oh, I to, agree. to anything, I to agree. anybody, to anybody's league. So, you know, I think we, we got to take a deep breath here mm -hmm. and say, tell the truth is what we're saying. Don't say we didn't give you that opportunity. They're not doing this. They're not. You do, when you didn't, when you came before us and said, we don't need it. I have 10 guys in my department. If I don't have to maintain a field, I'm not going to maintain it. Because at, like everybody else, beginning of the year, we drag fields. I can go tell you, Lafayette Park looks like there's grass everywhere. Mm -hmm. There's nothing there. So if I'm not going to drag it, nobody's going to drag it. These guys drag their own fields. Maplewood drags their own fields. They get people to work on their own fields. That is the trade-off for carte blanche 24-7 use of a ball field. That's what we do, because I don't have 40 people anymore to maintain ball fields like we did, or 50 people working in my department to do that. I now have 10, okay? Two guys doing barrels on Mondays and Fridays, two guys might call in sick, two guys on vacation. Guess what? I'm down to four guys for 29 parks and playgrounds. I cannot maintain ball fields for leagues that go pay somewhere else and get mine for free. We have no desire to pay some, and we But I'm telling you, when she says that Let's we go. pay other people, go on that night. is the trade-off, <laughs> unfortunately. We have done work on, our, on Lafayette this year. That's it. Dra in terms of dragging the and field. If you, and my, again, if you know that you're gonna buy base anchors for Dumont, then you know that's the, the procedure. The leagues buy the base anchors for the fields that they use. We There's adding, no other league on that. We were Lafayette adding additional Park. ones so we could keep the additional ones and have it a second set. Lafayettes were stolen after the fact. That's why we didn't wouldn't have didn't get them at the time. Okay. They were dug up. It's in I'm gonna cut I'm gonna get out of here. When um this would have to be a big it, it, when um, Mikio did the fields, they didn't. He decided previously that he did not want that. It wouldn't be good because of the frost line to 
uh, cemented in, it was pushed in. So that was the problem. Mm -hmm. And that was the problem. And we anchored it. It's cemented, it's level, it's measured from the corner of the plate, 90 feet up. And, and, and that's what we did at Dumont. We yeah, didn't know the other one. In, in 10 years we haven't. Yeah, we haven't had to do anything with them before. We, when okay, we so if you've used the field for 10 years and this is the first time you're going to replace the base anchors, damn, just buy the base anchors and put them in. It gives you cut launch to use that field. The men's league is not there anymore. There's nobody from Providence coming in to kick you off. So. I think you've got to be reasonable. I think it, it just every single time it's like, you didn't do this for us. You, I have a thing, can I get chalk? Here's an email, can I get chalk for my field? Yes, let me know when you're gonna come by so I can have the guys back at the garage. Crickets, no one, free, no one even we're calls gonna, me the, anymore. The tournament we're gonna move this on, not you. Yeah. We're gonna move this on. Hmm? I think what we need to do, best interest, you guys need to work with Ms. Smith and with the board. No more trash in the park board. Stay off of social media. Because believe me, I, re I see it all. I see it all. And I don't like it, the comments about myself and Ms. Smith and, uh, and some of the other commissioners and everything. It's not fair to us. We don't get paid for this. I don't need to get the headaches in that and get my name trashed in that for a volunteer park board. Hey, you I guys are volunteers. You're volunteers just like I'm a volunteer. You know, I'm doing this for the community and make sure everybody is, everybody's following the same rules, okay? To get trash that. We were good enough just now, a little while ago, to approve your league. That does not have the 2020. We're gonna let you do that fundraiser, correct? And waived all the fees. So if we weren't good partners, we wouldn't have let you do that. The fundraiser, you know. Okay? I'm just saying, I, I'm not okay. speaking for my wife. Right. I have not right. commented. And the other thing is now, to get a point, are you going to be the representative for the hitman? And yeah. she's going to be for four of a national? We can do that if you would like. If you want to do that, because I don't want to be in the middle of that one saying one thing, one saying another thing. It's either going to be you're the designated for the four of a hitman. Well, you, I think if it's all one organization, you need to have one spokesperson. Or one spokesperson. It is. Whoever's going to be. Technically done. To, it's Two different organizations? I, it, that's fine. It's under, the, it's under the umbrella, but it's run separately. So I have no problem being decision. that person if How's that makes it feel? easier. Do they want to have two different spokespersons, one for national, for the national, and Mr. Vining for the, for the hitman? I just think we, I don't think, I don't even think the person is it. We need to respect each other yeah, and have proper matter. communication yeah. and not go walking out because you didn't, you don't feel that something's, listen, I, I'd like to walk out a lot of times, but I don't. You got to sit here. No one's picking on anybody, mm -hmm. but the point of it all is, you know, uh, the issues have been with this league. So of course we're going to go back and forth. I don't have issues with other leagues. Other leagues don't have issues with me. We're not all over social media with that. Yeah. That's what needs to stop. If you want to have a conversation, then let's have the conversation. And that's why I brought these emails forward because all of this was in the back door. Everybody, with the park board was the bad guys, and everybody else is only hearing what they had to say. So. It's all out there now. The, the emails are out there. What caused this? Because, again, I'm not going to answer contentious emails. It yeah. just doesn't, it's not productive. So we know what we're doing. You know that you're, so at this point, at this point, are you using Lafayette Park for practice? Because you do not have the permit issued to you yet to use Lafayette Park for practice. We are, the 14-year the, the season is over. 18 years is using it for practice. Until when? The end of August? Yes. Okay. And the 18U uses it on what days? They are using it. Um, I mean, I was even to the point where I go, don't come pick up your Little League permits till we straighten out these AAU permits so you don't have to come down here 10 times. I've been more than accommodating, I think. I'll mm -hmm. be honest with you. I, I'm not saying otherwise. And okay. that's the reason why I didn't pick up the chalk is I didn't want to take it if we weren't going to be using it. Okay. Um, and part of that is, and the issue in terms of the day is I have talked to the coaches that they're supposed to be on different days, or on specific days. They've been having practices on Tuesdays. Tuesdays only. They are also doing Thursday, but they've been going to the batting cage depending on the weather. So Tuesdays and Thursdays would be the days that they would have practice. Okay. So the 18U team, so this board knows, wants to practice at Lafayette Park on Tuesdays and Thursdays. 
Correct. 5.30? What time? Uh, usually it's like 5 to 5.30 to 8 or somewhere in okay, that time range. 5.30 yes. to dock. All right. Okay. So, so that's, that's now I can issue that permit. Tuesdays and Thursdays, 5.30 to 8. So we all hear this because mm -hmm. that way, once it's in the minutes, mm -hmm. I don't want the public later on saying, oh, well, we, we're changing to Wednesdays and, uh, Wednesdays and Fridays. And you can't do that. We are voted on something. We have to go by what, we, what you ask for. I understand. Yes. Okay. So that and, like said, and, and your little league is done, correct? Yes, and the 14 U is done for the season as well. Okay, so all you need right now is a permit for Tuesdays and Thursdays. So you don't even need to pick up your other permits. You need to pick up a permit for Tuesdays and Thursdays through August 31st. Yeah, it's I don't think it's even that late, but I'll say that. We'll yes. put it till then so that if anything happens. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Right. Thank you. Do you see you out of there? Or Okay. No. I wasn't sure of anything else. Awesome. Yep. Okay. All right. Number five, commissioner inquiries. I got some things. Okay. <laughs> um, so I want to go back and just talk about the Jack Hackett situation really yep. quick. Not to ruffle feathers. Um, I obviously made the motion. Probably people are not going to like it. My, in my life, I've been a homeowner. I've had my property destroyed. It is extremely expensive. Reading the emails, I can tell that these individuals are very frustrated. Um, understa like, understandably so, you bought a house near a park. However, that doesn't mean that you just have to eat the cost of their damage to your property. Um, so that's one thing I will say is I don't like pulling permits. That's 100% I don't like that at all because I like seeing the community of Fall River coming together, whether it's sports, education, music, anything, um, but I do think it needs to be addressed seeing as these people have had years of this and had he just contacted whoever it is, if you have a league and there's, even if each team has their own insurance policy, you have to tell them you have 24 hours to get this done and if they don't, then you use your own liability insurance and get it done because these people shouldn't be waiting weeks and months or however long this has been, a month now, to get their damage fixed just because you can't contact somebody because they're in Florida. Um, so that's one thing that I have to say about that aspect of it. Um, another thing I have um, is to all the commissioners, I know we vote on a lot of different things that happen in Fall River. Um, last meeting we voted on the basketball league that's happening in Kennedy Park on Wednesdays and Thursdays. I implore all of you to stop by that at some point. It's one of the most amazing things I've ever seen. Over 200 kids ended up signing up um, of, between elementary and high school and then they even have some adults playing and it's been like a really really great experience to see all of them coming together and that many people. Seeing as you put it together in such a short amount of time I definitely think this is going to end up being an annual thing um, and I think I understand that this is an unpaid volunteer position and any person in a position of power in Fall River, they, everyone needs to be more involved. We can't be voting on things and then not actually showing up. Because I also think that that's why we have that stigma of the park board goes up there, they make all of these rules and regulations or they, they bid or, um, or rule on certain things but then nobody really goes to any of these events. And I think if we show our face, they'll realize we're not just up here saying approve, deny, they'll realize like we actually care. Um, so that's just something that I wanted to throw out there. Like the Juneteenth event as well, like that was an absolutely amazing event. Um, and I know there was some questions on what Juneteenth was um, and I implored everybody to educate themselves on what the event is about um, and what the holiday is for. So I'm really hoping everybody did that. Um, but yeah, that's all that I have for now. Thank you, Commissioner Burns. Commissioner Sylvia. I, I don't I've been around the for 25 years. I've been in the park, every single park. And uh, we witnessed tonight a, a lack of cooperative situation. And playing with her, we didn't catch exactly what happened. She stormed out of the meeting, out of the room. So, you know, it, to sit here and, and sit, say, and make accusations about people and things and just one, one, two, nobody's gonna tell me that nobody in this community goes if you don't like what a board or a representative does, you go to a higher authority. You go over people's heads. 
It happens all the time. Okay? And, and we witness that all the time. We make, I agree with the part, we make rules and we try to, you know, be fair to everyone. But to, to sit here and listen to what I just listened to, and, you know, and usually I'm a little more vocal at these meetings. Um, tonight I chose not to be. Um, and that was done on purpose. So, it is what it is. Mr. Nefarious? Um, what's that? No, I just need to get excused. I've got to go back to Griffin Park. And I just want to say thank you for all you guys, everything you guys do, serving here. Uh, I know we've been approving a lot of stuff, and like Commissioner Burns says, the league and everything. Uh, I will be making my way over there sometime. I know I talked to Bobby uh, myself and told him congratulations and everything that he does. Uh, and the rest of the uh, gentlemen that are involved with that. But I've been making sure that they had everything they needed, their lights and everything. So I've been playing that part, making sure that everything was getting done for them. Uh, the June thing, uh, team thing, I also looked at, and that was a tremendous hit. Uh, but I know we got the first arts in the park tonight at Griffin Park. We've been approving a lot of stuff. Uh, we're doing a lot of good stuff in that to get the community back out there and everything. So. That's the only thing I say is everybody have a safe summer and hopefully everybody enjoys everything that we've been doing for. Thank you. I make a motion to adjourn. I Thank second you. Second. Oh, Commissioner Burns makes the motion to adjourn. Second by Commissioner Farias. No. All in favor? Sylvia. Oh, Commissioner Sylvia, I'm sorry. Yeah, Commissioner Burns matter. made the motion to adjourn. Commissioner Sylvia made the uh, second. All in favor to adjourn? Aye. Aye.